I'm Carrie Hennessy and welcome to The Dirt. Today's episode is on one of my favorite topics. I love butterflies and any plants that will attract them to my garden. So today I thought we would take a trip away from the nursery to a place that's loaded with butterflies this time of year. I'm at the Milwaukee County Park headquarters in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin at the entrance of the local Monarch Trail. The trail is a collaborative effort of members of the community to preserve these open fields. Monarch butterflies are the only species that migrate the way birds do, traveling all the way to Mexico to spend the winter. Just think how amazing that is. And this site has been identified as one of their annual stopping grounds as they make the trek south. I love coming here throughout the summer to see how many different butterflies I can find and to just relax and soak up nature. Come join me today as I walk along the trail and hopefully we'll see lots of Lepidoptera today. wild areas like this are ideal for finding butterflies. Butterflies that are native to Wisconsin will get their nectar from a wide variety of plants. However, the caterpillars are more specific to a host plant. For instance, the monarch caterpillar will only feed on members of the milkweed family. Sometimes I can find the eggs that are laid on the underside of the leaves, or if I'm really lucky, a chrysalis. Here I am surrounded by lots of different plant varieties that will provide nectar for adult butterflies. I can see milkweed, goldenrod, aster, ironweed, and even Queen Anne's lace and thistles will provide nectar for the butterflies. What we might consider a weed in our garden is a great food source for caterpillars. On a sunny day, I can find eastern tiger swallowtails, buckeyes, red admirals, red spotted purples, and the tiny eastern tailed blue butterflies flitting from flower to flower. I've also discovered that if I come here when the sun is setting, they are slowing down for the night to catch the last rays of sunshine. Then it's also easier to get photographs of them. This is a lower spot along the trail where a small footbridge connects to the North Fir. It's a great spot to look for butterflies that are puddling. Puddling is when a butterfly extracts water and nutrients from a moist area like a mud puddle or sand along a beach or gravel on the side of the road. One of the threats to this natural butterfly habitat is the teasel plant. It's in the thistle family and has started to take over and choke out a lot of the native plants that butterflies rely on. Now some thistles are actually great for butterflies, providing nectar and food for caterpillars, but not this kind. Teasel is an invasive species that is often found along highways because mowers will distribute the seed. Sometimes it is spread by improper disposal of the dried seed heads that are used in floral arrangements. An unusual landmark along the trail is the Eschweiler buildings. Built around the turn of the century, they were used as an agriculture school for our rural Milwaukee County residents. Now they sit vacant in our historical landmark, but the surrounding concrete is ideal for butterfly basking. Butterflies will rest on a stone surface to absorb the residual heat and warm their wing muscles to fly on a cool day. Finally, we've come to the massive sycamore tree. A lot of activity happens around here. A natural stand of nectar plants grows underneath. And in the evening, you can see butterflies coming to roost in the tree for the night. Trees and shrubs are very important in a butterfly garden because they offer protection from predators, wind, and rain. Well, we've come to the end of the Monarch Trail. Seeing butterflies in their natural habitat is so inspirational. So let's head back to the nursery and I'll show you how to replicate what you've seen today to create an inviting butterfly garden at home. But first, I'm going to give a $2 donation to help support the butterfly trail and take a Monarch button as a souvenir. Welcome back. I'm in the butterfly garden at Johnson's Nursery. We chose this location because it gets plenty of sun during the day and there are lots of established trees and shrubs surrounding the area for roosting. We installed an assortment of plants that attract butterflies, including some for caterpillars like red milkweed and prairie drop seed grass. 
A path of stepping stones going through the garden also doubles as an area for the butterflies to bask and absorb heat. Remember how we saw a butterfly puddling by the footbridge at the Monarch Trail? You can replicate puddling at home by filling a bird bath with sand and keeping it just moist enough to hold a handprint. For a successful butterfly garden, you might have to change a couple of your maintenance tactics. For instance, you cannot use pesticides. Pesticides can't tell the difference between the Japanese beetle or the monarch caterpillar feeding on your milkweed. And you should wait until early spring to cut back all your perennials. Remember, monarchs are the only species that migrate the way birds do. The rest of our native Wisconsin butterflies will overwinter here, whether as an adult, a chrysalis, caterpillar, or an egg. I don't even rake up fallen leaves until spring because I don't want to disturb a butterfly that might be hibernating underneath. Now let's go take a closer look at some of my favorite plants to attract butterflies. I put together an assortment of plants guaranteed to bring some butterflies to the garden. Of course, you have to have a milkweed. We carry a couple different kinds. Asclepius incarnata, red milkweed, and Asclepius tuberosa, butterfly weed. Both are native to Wisconsin and loved by monarchs, but be sure to put the butterfly weed in a spot with well-drained soil. Red milkweed can handle a wetter location just fine. Prairie Blazing Star will attract a wide variety of butterflies, as will tall garden flocks. Butterflies are typically attracted to bright colors like orange, yellow, red, and purple. They especially like purple coneflower because the flat open flower is easy for them to land on. Joe Pieweed will also invite a flurry of activity. One plant that's not native to Wisconsin, but I still like to include in my butterfly garden, is Budlia, also known as butterfly bush. In our climate, it's considered to be a perennial, not a shrub, because it will die to the ground every winter. Also, it might not survive the winter. But even though it's a high maintenance plant, I still like to include it in a garden because every butterfly will come to the party on this one. This one happens to be a deep purple, but they're also available in shades of purple, pink, and white. To mimic the more natural look we saw at the Monarch Trail, try massing red milkweed in a large open area with rosinweed, ironweed, fireworks goldenrod, and hoary vervain. Include some little blue stem grass for texture. If you don't have a large area to lure Lepidoptera to your yard, or you need some help making the selections and how to put it all together, we have a great alternative. Johnson's Nursery offers a design solution called Garden Slices. Garden slices are theme gardens that can be installed in a single weekend. Our most popular theme is the Don't Flutter By Butterfly Garden Slice. We provide you with the design, instructions, and all the plants you need to install your very own butterfly garden in a sunny location. A bird bath for puddling and a stone for basking are not included in the package, but we do recommend you add them. Butterflies are such enchanting and beautiful creatures. I hope today's episode has inspired you to go on a butterfly hunt like the Monarch Trail, or better yet, install your own garden at home. When you invite them to your yard, be sure to place a bench nearby or situate the garden next to a window so you can admire the new visitors. If you include the right plants, the butterflies will soon follow. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Carrie Hennessy, and tune in next time to get the latest dirt.